The year is 2022, and the world needs heroes more than ever before, which is why we're going to play some absolute power. Welcome everybody to Casters and Castles. I'm Tormented by Gnomes. I'll be your game master and your host. Joining me, we've got our very own super crew, starting out with Leg Day. Howdy gamers, I'm uh, Leg Day, I cast the Overwatch League, and I occasionally stream Overwatch, uh, ready to crack open a big old can of... Uh, whoop ass on whoever may decide to oppose our little group. The production value, my god. <laughs> <laughs> Next up in the team, we've got Lemon Kiwi. Welcome, tell us who you are. Hi, I'm Lemon Kiwi. I'm the can opener's co caster. Uh, we cast the Overwatch League together. I also do some streaming and some, uh, some, some gaming here, too. Honey, wake up. New superhero name just dropped. I was going to say, is that going to be somebody's like, I am the can opener. <laughs> That's your whole secret with, with superhero identity. the powers identity. of a man and the powers of a can opener. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe the can of ass is a literal magical can that you open in order to transform. <gasps> oh, yeah. Hmm. All right. Too many good ideas. Too many good ideas. Uh, Matt, what's up? Who are you? Why are you here? Hi, I'm Ninja Man Matt. Uh, I am a moderator on both uh, this channel of Caches and Castles and the Discord. Uh, Co-creator of Anakra with our very own Tormented by Gnomes. And sometimes you'll catch me uh, doing all sorts of little things here and there. Uh, you can find me on Coriander Society on 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time every Tuesday. Uh, except during our absolute power game. Woo I don't have a can opener. So <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do. Last exactly. But, last but not least, also from the Coriander Society group, it's Pods of War. Hello everyone, my name is Pods or Janessa. I am a streamer, a former host for GameStop TV, and I also am a CEO for a new management company for creators and gamers uh, called Phoenix Down. Uh, thanks for having me, and I guess it's time to play. <laughs> yes, excellent. So, today folks, we're going to be creating characters and doing our session zero for Absolute Power. Absolute Power is the second edition of a superhero game from 20 years ago called Silver Age Sentinels. It's created by Daisgami Publishing Company. They also make Anime 5e, which is based on the Big Eyes Small Mouth 4th edition rule set, which is powered by the same rules we're going to be using today. This is not Dungeons and Dragons. This is a different rule engine. It's called the Tri-Stat System. So today we're going to all create our characters together. We're going to form our super team together, figure out their backstory, customize their powers, because the Tri-Stat System and Absolute Power allows you to build your character from the ground up if you want, completely customizing all their abilities, their equipment, their weaknesses, everything. So let's talk just a little bit about the setting before we get into each step of this. Sentinel Earth looks very much like our world. It is the year 2022. People are still dealing with the aftermath of a global disease. The presidency, everything, like the political environment, almost the same as our world. The difference is heroes, myths, and legends have always been among us. And they really started popping up during the golden age of comics in 1920s, 1930s. Uh, there are superheroes all over the world. Their actions are governed by laws and regulations. The most famous heroes of all are called the Guard. They've been protecting the world for years and years and years, and they are beloved by almost everybody. There's a national treaty in place that allows them to intervene to help wherever help is needed in almost any country. But they're all growing very old. They're in their 80s, and those who are not preserved by supernatural elements are beginning to grow weary. But they can't pass on their mantles of hero, uh, their positions in the guard to a new hero, because every single country in the world would have to agree on nominating that person. And then every single country in the world would have their own political problems to deal with. So heroes are very much a part of life. There are corporate sponsored superheroes. There are nationally sponsored superheroes. A aquatic superhero called Seawolf has created his own artificial island where he's gathering superheroes to himself to form their own nation where they can be sovereign off on their own in the water. A long lost mysterious island of Thule has been raised from the surface of the, from the bottom of the ocean. 
and it's ruled over people who claim to be benevolent, but many believe that they have ties back to the Nazi regime and the occult studies that were performed by the Nazi party during World War II. Sentinel's greatest enemy is Kreutzritter, who was a Nazi occultist who developed supernatural powers over the elements. Masked heroes are in every single part of the world. Aliens have tried to conquer. The Haud Imperium recently occupied the entire planet, and it was only after a united effort by all the heroes that they threw them off and drove them back. They left behind some of their bases and their technology, and the different governments of the world are rifling through trying to find anything that they can use for themselves. More recently, the Dark Queen shrouded the entire planet in eternal night, threatening to conquer it. She's basically an evil fairy queen. Imagine from our campaign, the Lady Rowan, except even more so. She was driven off by a concerted effort by all the world's heroes. So the citizens of Sentinel Earth, in addition to dealing with all the that we deal with on a, on a daily basis, are used to these sorts of things going on. There is magic, there is super science, there is aliens. All these things are a part of this world. And now we're gonna add you, your heroes, and your story to Sentinel Earth. Anyone have any questions or anything before we move on? That sounds good. Sounds good? Great. So, before we get into the mechanics, the Tristat system allows you to customize your character almost entire, actually, yeah, pretty much entirely from the ground up. And with that many options, sometimes it can be suffocating. You're going to be given 100 points to spend on your character. A 100 point character is uh, somebody who you might be human, but you'd be a legendary martial artist or a secret agent. You could be a character with uh, moderate metahuman or psychic powers. You could be above average, but also have special gear. A dark vigilante. I think that they're trying not to say uh, Batman, but Batman. <laughs> a squad of giant robot mecha pilots, the captain and crew of a starship. You are street. This is for street level adventures. You're not prepared to save the world right now, but you are ready to make a difference in your city, your stomping grounds, wherever it is that you are. And you are you're starting out as badasses. All right. If we want to put a number on this, I think Sentinel, the guy in the middle of that picture, he's like a 350 point hero or something. Yeah. Oh gosh. But Sentinel has all the powers. You know, he, he he's the guy on the cover yeah. of the book. He gets all the powers. Yeah. 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 So he's all Superman. Exactly. Has anybody given any thought to what kind of hero you want to play in this world? A moderate amount. Yes. Yeah, a little bit. More so a high concept than really a... Uh... A high concept is the right place to start. What? Okay. Tell me about your high concept. Ooh, okay, well, uh, I have monster, uh, unlimited power, and sexy question mark. <laughs> sexy. Sexy? Okay. Uh, monster, we can do. Sexy, we can do. Question mark we can do. Unlimited okay. power, that's gonna be a work in progress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking, you know, right now I'm I'm uh, on the tutorial or the uh mm -hmm. the thirty day trial, you know? Exactly. Yeah, you're on the thirty day trial of unlimited power. Exactly. Um, all right, so Matt is thinking about playing some kind of a monster in the spirit of Swamp Thing or Hellboy or the thing along those yeah, lines. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Okay, great. What about the rest of you? Has anyone given any thought to what their like overall high concept is? Or do you want to hash some things out right now or get some ideas? Okay, I, I have an I've idea. I've got a half concept myself. Okay, Genesis, you get fast. Okay. Um, I don't know how we want to make this work, but um, I would like to be an influencer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Titania? Influencer. <laughs> okay. All right. You, are an, you can be an influencer. That's completely allowed. Are you a superhero influencer with actual powers or are you just so freaking influential that it acts like a superpower are well, you a badass normal well, or are you a metahuman yeah i was thinking um maybe maybe her powers are a little undercover but she could be like a psychic and that's how she's influencing people okay my, my first things but we we could change it we could. okay a psychic influencer we can work with that that's that's workable all right 
So I've written that down, uh, and I'll put psychic in question mark as well. Legs, you were you were spitting something over there. I am. I have a, a vague concept that I was told about from an old manga of someone who consumes things and they can be held inside an extra men, extra dimensional void inside themselves and and can then procure slash produce them at will. Matter eater lad. Like a bag of holding. Well, like, <laughs> like a bag of holding, but a person. A bloke of holding. Yeah. Are you okay. also can opener man? Do you keep the can opener yeah, inside I, I mean, of you? I, I, he, he, he could consume a can opener and just, you know, so yeah, basically like Kirby, a bag of holding and can opener man all, all in, in one. one. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Lemon, what have you been thinking about? Where are you at with your high concept at this point? I think I'm like leaning towards looking very mid, but being very powerful, like an emotional nuke, like a one punch man. Ooh. Who looks, you know, like normal, but then has a lot of power and flies because flying is an important <laughs> power I've always wanted. <laughs> okay, so looks normal. I wrote down emotional nuke and I wrote down flight. That good? That about where you're at? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So let's Can take I just a look share real quick i had a backup character in case somebody else wanted a monster when i found this regeneration ability and it's really i'm not gonna do it because it was i think it would step on levin's toes but i like the idea of just having somebody with a maxed out resurrection where it's a normal guy that they just their superpower is they, they go on the scene they're absolutely mundane normal but when they die they just come back immediately like they just always just immediately reform See, I was thinking shield. that if I had more points, I'd be just like <laughs> yeah. a human electrode who just comes out, uses self-destruct, and then reforms. <laughs> I wasn't gonna say that, but yeah. <laughs> and just reforms like Zack from League of Legends, like little blobs uh -huh. that reform your body yes. and it takes time. <laughs> Maybe with more points, so you could explore that down the line. Absolutely. Oh man. Oh man. All right. So let's go. Also, I found Pocket Dimension for Leg Day. That's that's perfect. Yeah, Pocket Dimension mm -hmm. is in there. So the way that this works, uh, first off, let's go ahead and look at some benchmarks because there's a few things that I want to go over for the actual system. It's called the Tri-Stat System because there are three stats, mind, body, and soul. Those are the only three stats in the game. There are a few stats that are derived from that, such as your combat value, your skill in combat is a combination of all three. If you've got an enormous body score, so you're just like this huge ogre, but almost no mind score, then no matter how strong you are, people are going to be able to outsmart you. The combat system is a little bit more abstracted. So somebody who's more clever than you can be a better combatant than you. Your damage multiplier is going to be the combination of your body and mind, having the strength and knowing how to apply it. Your health points is a combination of your body and soul, because soul is a measure of determination and willpower, refusing to go down. Your energy points, energy is a resource you can use to fuel your powers uh, to, if you'll allow it, the GM. There are some rules okay. in there where you can do retcons with energy points. You can do, uh, you can push your powers a little bit further with energy points, etc. Oh. It's that inner reserve of uh, of gumption that you can use to get just a little bit more out of your abilities. Okay. So, you've got your basic concepts down. No, I'm not going to pull Wait, that did, one out. Did you say what damage multiplier was? Can you just like throw that into? Yeah. To do extra let me stuff? Uh, pull that up real quick. It's under derived stats. So. Do, do, do. Also, I just found this person called Dead Eye Chimp, and it's just a huge gorilla with a gun and a detective gumshoe suit. Like, <laughs> that's an ex I, that's an excellent concept. Like, I know I said I wanted to be a sexy monster, and I kind of found it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like, look at this boy. Absolute so, unit. your damage multiplier is five. Okay. So when you inflict damage, it's multiplied by five. If the oh, weapon, cool. if there's a gun that says it deals like two points of damage and you're a hero with a weapon modifier of five, you deal 10 damage. 10 points, okay. But there are abilities you can get to pump that up and down, like super strength, massive damage, using a special weapon, so on oh, and cool. so forth. 
All right. So let's go ahead and go through character creation. We're going to be creating characters at a moderate power level. I think that I, I need to share that out. And like I said earlier, you're going to be powerful enough to be a major force. People will know you in your city, but you're not really out there fighting back the alien invasion on your own. All right. Uh, so moderate power. We talked about that. That's going to put some limits uh, on your benchmarks. Oh, yeah, that's where it is. Here we go. Let me show that to all of you. So essentially what it means is that until you get to the next sort of tier of power, you can't be somebody who puts all their, like completely min maxes himself in order to be an Omega level mutant, but only in this one area, right? There is a little bit of balancing that goes on. So these are your benchmarks. We're playing at the average level. So your stats, mind, body, and soul can't exceed mm, 12. Okay. When you get an attribute, attributes are superpowers or character features like influence. Maybe there's an influence. I haven't gotten into the whole like menu, the, the menu of powers you can buy off of. But you can't exceed six effective levels in one power. And you can see it goes beyond 10. So Sentinel has 10 plus probably in some of these. There's a couple okay. of uh, mins and maxes on your health points and energy points to make sure that even if you're really frail, uh, you're in this weight class, so you've got a minimum on that. So on and so forth. So this is just to give you an idea as we're about to move into the next section of actually building out these characters. So you have 100 points to spend, and you can spend them on buying attributes from the book which include all your powers, you also need to spend them to buy your stats. Every one point in your stats costs two points to spend. So if you want to have a strength of 10, you need to spend 20 points to get that strength score of 10, all right? Let me pull up a... Oh, but we can't be more than a 12, so a 10 is good. Yes. There's okay. actually, a, there's a table for this. I'm gonna see if I can pull this. Yeah, here we go, bam. This is gonna give you an idea. I find this is always helpful. This is gonna give you an idea of what is what. So a 10 is best in the country. A 12 is like Captain America. Yes. Uh, honestly, I, I think that Captain America is up in the 14, 13. Uh, 12 is somebody who has no superhero serum, but has trained like the person who has trained the most. The person who is absolutely at the physical limits of human potential. Gotcha. Does that make sense? It makes sense. So you have points to spend. 12 is Batman. All right. 12 is Batman. Thank you, Daisukami. Mm -hmm. So you have... 100 points and every you, the, the costs are right here as well and this is going to affect all of your skills because the way that rolls work in this game almost all rolls are 2d6 you roll 2d6 and i'd say okay check body you'd roll 2d6 and add your body score right or you might roll 2d6 and check your soul against it so these stats are super super important to your character but if you spend too many points on these stats you're not going to have a lot of cool fun items and abilities and etc to work with i'm not going to pull up the list of all the attributes because you know that's in the book you can see a lot of them in the primer which is available for free uh, i think we've linked it down below here i'm gonna see okay yeah so here is the shopping list of attributes. There are a lot of them. And there's always okay. room for making something up yourself. And the other thing is that these attributes, when you buy them, let's say you wanna buy um, elasticity, right? Elastigirl. That power scales. You don't just spend one point on it because that only gives you one rank of it. And maybe one rank of elasticity, you can look it up in the book itself, but that's like, okay, you ha you're slightly stretchy. But if you want to be able to go full Mr. Fantastic, you need to be up to a rank eight or a rank 10. And that costs more points to get all the way up there. The good news is, 
you're going to be able to customize these with with uh, limiters and enhancers. So let's say that you want to buy the control environment ability and you want to make it super, super strong, but then you limit it so you can you put a limiter on it, which is I can only do this when I'm standing in sunlight. You can also give your character defects, weaknesses, which are going to give you more points to spend. Now, I know this all sounds like a lot, and it is. The book <laughs> has a ton, a ton of stuff in it, which is why it also comes with some templates, some pre-packaged nice. places for you to start out with. If you go to chapter three in the book, you can okay. see that there are some templates in there. This is in the book one of Ultimate Power. I've made a Pokemon in Daiskame system before, so I think I'll yeah. probably be okay. That's the thing. <laughs> Anime 5e is basically taking this system and then making the point by system work in 5e instead of the Tristat system. So you've had yes. the opportunity to like add abilities. Uh, Slakura from Coriander Society is created with these rules. Yeah. So take a look at some of these templates to see if they are going to give you what it is that you're looking for. But if you're struggling for inspiration, we can always go, instead of being down here in the nitty gritty, we can always take a step back up to talk about your character, your superhero team, uh, how you met, that kind of big picture stuff, which might help inform some of these things. All right. Now, mate, well, at chapter three, we were looking at what in chapter three? Templates. So if you're in chapter three of the book, there are some templates. templates. Uh, there's there power templates, including the animalist, who's somebody who is like a, a werewolf or somebody who, you know, calls upon some like bestial powers. Uh, Sabretooth would fit into this genre, I think. Yeah. The champion uh, Cap is another one. Captain America could be considered a champion. The dynamo has like energy and shoots energy. So you could say Iceman or the Human Torch could be examples of that. Although nice. the, the Elemancer is somebody who can control the elements, right? So Magneto would be an incredibly powerful Elemancer with some limits on him, I think. That's one way that you could build Magneto. And all of these, the Tristat system doesn't have classes because you are literally free to build it however you want. But these templates can be helpful with giving you a starting point. I'll see if I can put one of them up as an example on the screen. Just so that I check see a place here for Go ahead. Yeah. I see a place here for larger characters. I'm very intrigued. Yeah, there's templates for size so you can get all the benefits of being large. There's templates mm. for species as well if you want to be an alien or a uh, a lodestar, which are these ancient gods of the world. I'm going to clip the powerhouse so I can just put it up as an example. Again, there's a lot more of these in the book itself. This, uh, maybe this is a niche question, uh, but for the limiter of concentration, does that work similar to D&D, &D, where it's like your concentration is interrupted by like an attack? Let's take a look. I'm going to pull it up in the book on page. Yes, you have to concentrate on it. So when you take a limiter, you can apply it up to three times. So if you apply it once, now that power requires slight concentration. You can still defend. You can't attack or use other powers, but you can still like defend yourself and move around. If you apply it twice, all you can do is move slowly and talk while you're focusing on the power. If you apply it three times, you cannot do anything else while focusing on that power. There isn't a specific rule in there that says if you get attacked, like you have to roll a check. But as the game master, I probably would do that. Now, what a limiter on a on an attribute does, let's say you, you give yourself uh, Optic Blast, right, as an ability, and you put mm -hmm. the concentration limiter on it. When you put a limiter on that ability, that ability gets upgraded to the next effective level. So you only spent the points for rank one Optic Blast, but because you have to concentrate on it, now it's rank two Optic Blast. Mm. But if you wanted to add an enhancer to it, let's say Optic Blast and it like arcs and hits two different people, for example, that enhancer works the other way. Now it reduces it. So even though you spent the points for two ranks of Optic Blast, 
if you have an enhancer on it, you still spent all those points, but it only operates at an effective level of one. And that's how you can customize your abilities by picking from the, the whole list of all the enhancers, so on and so forth. Now, if you already want to look at defects, because you're saying, hmm, 100 points might not be enough, those are in chapter seven. These are things like uh, character flaws, weaknesses, uh, people can use your, your true identity against you, uh, you have an Achilles heel, you go into a blind fury, um, you have to work for an organization that puts hard restrictions on your activities. There's a lot of options in there, and they rank, you can take up to three ranks of them, and each of those ranks gives you a different number of points back that you can spend. Mm. So Matt, are you already looking at the large size template? Yeah, I'm looking at quick play templates for size, and I was also thinking mm -hmm. about combining that with the powerhouse. You can do that, because each of the templates, uh, uh, let me get back to putting the, the powerhouse up on the screen for everybody. Each of the templates comes in three different ranks that allows you to spend different numbers of points on it. So you could combine, I want to be an alien powerhouse. So I'm going to take only the rank one powerhouse because I want all these alien abilities as well. That costs X points. Yeah, I can pull that off. Does that make sense to everybody so far? Yeah, mm. by, by rank one, you mean the powerhouse that's the first degree, 30 points, right? Correct. And I'll gotcha. be showing everybody that in a moment. And you said we get a total of 100 points. You get 100 and points. If take, and if we take like the limiters or the defects, we can get more yes. points out of that. Defects? But it's gonna lower. Defects are on your character and they give you more points back. Limiters are on your attributes and they make your attributes more powerful in exchange for limiting them. I see. So it like narrows the scope of what your power can do, but makes it better. Exactly. So here's the powerhouse from the book as an example. And you can see this is just, you know, somebody who's big, strong, a bruiser. And there are three different ranks of it. Uh, first degree, second degree, third degree. And the first degree powerhouse only costs 30 points. So if you wanted to be a powerhouse and a uh, vigilante, you could take both of those templates and take all I those see. special abilities. Like you could combine the dynamo. So now you're a, a bruiser and you can shoot force blasts out of your hands or something like that. That'd be 60 mm. points. And you would have 40 points left for gear, for your species, for anything else you wanted to spend on, or you could spend those points to upgrade some of these special abilities. Where do you find the attacks, like your blasts or? So most of the time, uh, an attack or something like that is gonna be the weapon attribute. If you look at the powerhouse, you can see that they get attack mastery, so they're better at attacking and they get melee attack, so they can attack when they're unarmed. But if you look at the dynamo, I believe the dynamo has the weapon attribute, and the weapon attribute doesn't mean an actual, like, I'm running around with a sword. It just means some ability to attack. And that's where a lot of the customization comes in. Weapon attribute is on page 128. God, All I've right. got a complicated concept for this. What, do you want to hit me with it? What do you have in mind? Oh, no, I like, I'm just saying that mine's fairly complicated. Good. I'm, I'm, I'm sure between pocket dimension and like, I don't know, transmute or shape shifting or something, I can figure it out. Yeah, we can figure out combinations of it. Put some limiters and enhancers on it in order to make it work. Yeah. All right. You'll notice Do some we... of... Go ahead. Sorry. Do we no. have a place to write this down? Um, I can create a spot for you in Roll20, but I would recommend everybody keep notes. I also dropped a copy of the character sheet, which is a form-fillable PDF, in our local Discord. Oh, okay. But I would keep a, like a Google Doc because that's going to save automatically. I would definitely keep notes. The way that I like to do these things, this is the way I build NPCs for almost any game, 
is I get a, a workspace with notes and I just hash everything out. Then I put it into the character sheet. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. You can one trick pony in this game. Um, unless chat, you're talking about one true pairing, which you can also do that, I'm sure. Uh, for enhancements, so mm -hmm. do you pick a limiter and then that gives you an enhancement? No, let's, let's talk about this, right? So you okay. spend points to buy an ability at level one. A level one ability, if you add an enhancer to that, that reduces the effective level of that ability to zero. So either if you spend two ranks of, let's say, super strength, you can either have rank two super strength or rank one super strength plus an enhancer. Does that make sense? Yeah, I was just looking at po the potent enhancement mm -hmm. and I was trying to figure out, because I thought that just made the ability stronger, but let's take a the look level, at that then yeah. Well, then you, can, you just spend the points to, you know, go up that level, right? Because your limit is on your effective level. As a average level character, Average power, let's take a look at your benchmarks. The maximum effective level of any attribute cannot exceed six. So you could have uh, influence rank six if you wanted. However, you could also have influence rank six with two enhancers on it, but you paid for rank eight. Or you can have influence rank six with two enhancers and two uh, limiters on it. The, uh, it's just that the effective rank of it cannot exceed six for your level. Oh yeah, and there's different costs, right? Because mm -hmm. you say rank six, six, but that doesn't mean six points. Correct. It depends on the attribute. Correct, it depends on the attribute. Let's see if we can pull up one attribute as an example. Do to do. What can I find here? Okay. Control environment. It costs one point per level and it lets you initiate minor influences over things like light, darkness, heat, cold, humidity. So you can minorly change, let's say, snow because at rank one, control environment gives you control over one environment. Now let's pick something fancier. Hang on. Gnomes, that's not good enough. Let's do something. Okay. <laughs> elasticity. Let's do elasticity. And I'll, I'll carve this out. I'm working on a way to show you folks more of what we're looking at. But I'm just going to carve this out right now. So we'll look at uh, Mr. Fantastic Elastigirl. I'll upload this for you. And as a reminder, linked below this stream or this video, if you're watching in the future, is a link to the free introductory primer that walks you through a lot of these concepts. It doesn't have all the abilities, the attributes, etc., that are in the full book, but it does explain the rules and give you a couple of the basics and a few options to play with. And your reading comprehension is probably better than ours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So Lots I just popped up. I just popped up elasticity on the screen. This costs one point per level. It allows you to get all bendy. And Jesus, three kilometers. Yeah, that's <laughs> level 10, right? That's an app. So you guys can't get that right now. You can only max it out at level six, but you can still stretch your body up to 30 meters, which is a lot. And that would only cost you six points. That's not that expensive for you to be able to stretch out to 30 meters with 100 points to play with, right? But let's say that you wanted to add a limiter or an enhancer on it. I'll see if I can pull one of these out as well, unless this is done. Oh yeah, no, it's done loading. Okay, give me one second here. I have come up with a better solution. I'm just gonna preview the dang book.
so okay. we're going to look at enhancements. Attribute customization, chapter six. So we're going to go to page 143 and close this. Hmm. Let's see here. Alright, so let's say that you can use your attribute of being able to stretch to grab people. You want to you want to be able to grab people with it. So you assign the target's enhancer to it. You spend one assignment of targets, and now you can use your bendy body to grab two people at a time. Because you upgraded it once, now you still spent six points on elasticity, but it only operates at level rank five, which means that you can only stretch your body up to 10 meters because you added an enhancer to it. You can spend another point to get the effective rank back up to six. So in order to be able to stretch that far and grab two people, it actually costs you not six points, but seven points. Or instead of spending that extra point, you could take a limiter on it. Such as charges. You can only do it four to six times a day with one assignment of the charges limiter. Because unlike D&D, in the Tristat system, if you have a power, unless it's limited, you can just use it. You can just use it all the time. I love that so much more. It only, <laughs> but you can also one of the other things that you can put on it. Let's say that you want to do the whole the whole fantasy of the like the psychic who burns himself out and goes too far, but can like draw upon their own life force in in desperate measures, right? Mm -hmm. You could assign the backlash to your power. The backlash limiter means that if you fail by six or more something bad happens to you. So that's a character who like has difficulty controlling their powers, but their powers are stronger because you assigned a limiter to it, you get a free level of that power. And if you assign... Um, no, Mr. Yes. My amnesia, our maximum level is six, but it can go to seven with a limiter, yeah? The maximum effective level is six. So no, okay. it cannot go to seven, but it can be six with a bunch of, of attributes, with a bunch of enhancers on it. Maximum okay. effective level cannot exceed six. Gotcha. Thank you. Uh, for the energized attribute, mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm reading this correctly, but it says you have to have a limiter on it. Yes. Let me go up to that one real quick. Do, do, do. I know it's in here somewhere. Because from the limiters I've been reading, it's like, you know, activation, emotional mm -hmm. stuff. It takes like a round to use to have that limiter happen before the power is used like for example if i want to if i need to activate my extra energy mm -hmm. i have to sit there for a round and like soul power up my solar beam and then right. use it the next round oh that's so late there is a limiter called deplete so the deplete limiter means that whenever you use this power it drains your energy points that's where the energized attribute comes into play because the energized attribute means you get more energy points, which is useful if you have a power that consumes energy to be used. Oh, so I can get energized with a deplete limiter. Right. And so just have extra energy and then deplete it. Oh, so I don't have to activate it or do something. Right, let's take Special. a look at the energized attribute. Because it says it's usually used with activation assisted emotional, environmental, or equipment limiters mm -hmm. or other ones with GM permission. Energized, okay. So yeah, it increases your energy pool. Okay. And we can essentially take both uh, a limiter and an enhancement on something to essentially keep it null level. Right. 
if you put a limiter in and so here's what this is saying if you took first off yes leg day second lemon kiwi if you took the energized attribute that gives you more energy but you put a limiter on it which is emotional what that means is that extra pool of energy is locked unless in a time of great emotion then it becomes available to you okay so do I have to stick to the ones they listed of the activation assisted emotional environmental or equipment? Nope. Okay. You don't have to. You can just take it and just have more energy and then have a power, a really powerful weapon that consumes energy to use, you know, sort of give yourself the best of both worlds in that regard. Okay. Let's check out something here real quick on page 142. Do allowable enhancements so if you go to page it's 144 in the pdf 142 in the book that tells you which enhancements can have which uh which attributes can have which enhancements so not oh. every attribute can have every enhancement not all of them make sense for example what page was it 120 One, 144 or 142 attribute customization yeah, that's the right chapter. Just uh, go down one more page. Oh. God, the, the further I read into these, the less I know what I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much room for activities. Can, 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 I, can I have, like, you know, everything? <laughs> well, if it helps, helps, I'm trying to look at the templates and then pick one to two templates that look really cool and then modify them with powers mm -hmm. to try to mm -hmm. see how I want to customize it. That way I don't look at this plethora of options and go, mm -hmm. well, now I want to be Monkey D. Luffy a la One Piece. <laughs> <laughs> I already said sexy monster, so I feel like, you know, I need to, I need to Stick zero to in on what does that mean. Exactly, exactly. So if your attribute is not listed in allowable enhancements, does that mean your attribute can't be enhanced? It means you can't, um, I'll hear it on a case by case basis. What are you thinking of? Uh, what did I have? I was looking at range and potency, but I, I still haven't found an attribute mm -hmm. that tells me how to, cause I wanted some kind of like psychic blast as okay. like an attack, Weapon. but I don't. Also weapon. weapon. Okay, look, gotcha. look at the weapon attribute. That's where you want to start. Because weapon attributes actually have a bunch of their own special ways to customize them. Weapon is the default way if you want to have like a psychic beam attack. So let's take a look at this. Do, 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 do. The weapon attribute costs two points per level. And by default, it is an instantaneous melee attack. Oh, nope, didn't want to do that. I clicked on a hyperlink and now I'm up here. <laughs> All right, the weapon damage. All right, so remember how I said your damage multiplier is five by default? A level one weapon deals five damage. Mm-hmm. Let's see. So it deals an amount equal to the level weapon level multiplied by the multiplier. Yeah. Okay. So a weapon a level two does ten damage, etc., etc., etc. There are some other numbers that you add on top of that, but you can see that it goes up by five or whatever your damage multiplier is every single time. So if you spent rank six, you're, you guys can have a rank six weapon if you want. If you took rank six weapon, it would just be like hand to hand. You slap somebody and they take thirty damage. No, no special. It's just a melee attack that deals 30 freaking damage. So, so like yeah. the level 10 of that is like one punch man, right? Yeah, basically. Yeah. Probably you'd put some other stuff on it. That being said, you would definitely want to customize it. Weapons are the most customizable. Let's see. Everybody can strike. Somebody can just punch someone. It does zero and it. Okay. So you can punch somebody to just stun them, basically. Everybody has that. And it deals just damage equal to your combat value. That's a level zero weapon. But you want it to do, let's say we want to do a psychic blast, right? Weapons, ha like I said, have their own enhancements and those are on page 132. So book. let's see here. 
Let's. There's a specific one that says psychic, and there's a range. I know there's a psychic one, and I know there's a range one. So psychic counts as f holy crap. It counts as four enhancements. <laughs> Damn, man. Ah. Uh. But that means that a rank six psychic attack instead of costing six points costs ten points. What does that do? It's a mental or spiritual assault. It ignores armor ratings of armor and force fields. And it affects individuals who are incorporeal or made of energy as if they weren't. So oh. that's why it's so expensive because it bypasses all their defenses because you're just attacking their mind. So if you took six ranks of weapon plus psychic, that reduces it down to a rank two weapon. So you spend four more points. You've spent 10 points to have a psychic touch because you haven't added the range oh. enhancement to it. Which would then have it, what, level one? Well, let's so let's go down to the range enhancement. Just, just throw a giant marshmallow that's psychic <laughs> at him. Let's see. Is it distance? What is it called? Range. It's like a range enhancement. I think it's... I, I would need two ranks just to get it to go 10 meters. Yeah, what page are you on? Oh. <sighs> I saw it under enhancements. Uh, General enhancements? Got it, got it, got it, got it. Somewhere. It was where the limiters and stuff were. Okay, so yeah, so it's it's under the normal do do do. You could also take area, where for one assignment of the area enhancement, you have a psychic scream that hits everybody within three meters. For two enhancements, you have a psychic burst that emanates from you and hits everybody in 10 meters. But let's go to the range one. So, well, I found that in the primer. Yeah, increases distance, mm -hmm. enhancement. Yeah, I would need like two ranks. Mm -hmm. What page are you on? I don't know why I keep. Oh, I'm I looking found at it in limiters. The primer. I'm a goober. I'm a goober. Oh, you're in the primer. Okay, range. Oh, here we go. All right. So, if you want to hit people ten meters away with a psychic attack that is as powerful as it possibly can be, that would cost you, I think 12 points. Six points to make it a badass attack, four points for the psychic enhancer, that's 10 points, and then two points to hit people out to 10 meters. Well, wouldn't it be just 12 points just to get weapon to rank six? Because it's two points per weapon level. Ooh, my bad. And then I want yeah. it to rank six. So it's 12 points for weapon and then mm -hmm. minus. I don't know. I don't, my, math, my math hurts. Okay, let's do it again. So a rank six <laughs> weapon is 12 points. And you have to buy psychic, which would cost you eight points. So that's 20 points. And then you need to Does buy. reduce the rank? Well, that's the thing. It reduces the rank and then you buy those ranks back. Oh, that's okay. that's the math I'm doing right now. So weapon level 12 or le level six, whoop, 12 points psychic pew, back down to rank two, but it still costs you 12 points. Buy it back up to the top eight points. Now you've spent 20 points Buy two ranks of range. Boop, boop, drops you down to rank four Buy those back for another four. So you, that's 24 points. But that gives you a psychic attack that hits like a truck and skips everybody's defenses. And for two more points, you can go out to 100 meters. Yeah, I, I, I don't know how far everyone's going to be. <laughs> Superheroes, are, you know, Are we going to level during these episodes? Like, should I? Yeah, I'll give you a few. So the way that you level, you don't level up, you get points. Oh. I just give you points, points, you know? Do you think we'll get more points during these? Yeah, episodes? absolutely. I want to, I want to demonstrate the way that the system works for upgrading things. Does that all make sense? Where like you buy the ranks and then the, the enhancements take them away and you have to buy them back? Or you can put a limiter on it where it's like, ah, oh, it's difficult for me to use. And if I fail, I blow out my own brain, but I get those points back. <laughs> <laughs> the psychic sepaki. That's exactly yeah. what limiters are for. It's when you're looking down the barrel of a really expensive ability, you're like, hmm, I could spend four points or I could get, make it so if I fail the attack, it blows up my brain. 
So limiter is for like a specific ability, but defect is your overall character nerve. Right. Okay. Attributes are powers of your character and defects are restrictions on your character. Enhancers are buffs to your attributes and uh, limiters are debuffs to your attributes. Oh my god, there's Magnet. Attracts throngs of fans. That has to be a pods thing. Uh-huh. <laughs> Sounds about right. Are we, are we already looking at that, pods? Uh, one, one XP. I Boo! I was talking that whole time! Oh my oh, god, no. we weren't ignoring you, I no. swear. <laughs> um, yeah, Bruh. definitely looking at Magnet. Mm-hmm. How That's is it a defect to have fans? Is it so like they mobbed? would get in the way? Yeah. Oh. Oh my so, god! Like, it's Addison Ray. Ah! Can't leave my hotel room. Without yeah, paparazzi <laughs> have to like if you go in the front door, it just becomes completely disastrous. Yeah. What yeah. would be the difference between hounded and magnet? Because hounded is constant attention. So magnet or is that a is that's like my attention span? I don't know if this means fans. <laughs> All right, let's let's look at Hounded. Do do do. But I looked at it in the primer. That helps. Mm. Hounded is the paparazzi. Magnets is fanboys, fangirls, fanfolk. Mm. Fan scream. So like screaming Elvis. You know, Elvis walks in. Everyone screams and flocks to where he is. That's Magnet. Uh, you walk in and everyone's like, you know, what do you have to say about your latest uh, super powered battle that destroyed this bridge? That's Hounded. Like TMZ. <laughs> that makes sense. Exactly. Are you planning on signing with Sokovia Records? <laughs> um, another one I was looking at was oh gosh, I can't. What page is is that on? The Hounded is on page 158 or 156, depending on what PDF reader you're using. Oh weird. Um, An another thing I should point out is you can buy the item attribute and the item attribute gets you double your mileage because if you buy a five point item the item gets 10 points to spend on hmm. oh because now it's like that power isn't in you it's in something that can be taken away from you or destroyed etc it's it's you know the green lantern ring for example uh -huh. oh yeah that lets you get more bang for your buck, but then a lot of your power is tied up in your utility belt or your, your you know, you could buy a vehicle as well. You can buy a companion where you have like a loyal follower or Pokemon who fight with you. Then you have to design <laughs> all of them individually, but it is something that is in the rule system. It's something that we use for Yokai Blossom when we did Anime 5e. Mm -hmm. Do you have See, to I'm find points to AC? No, your combat value, so your combat value is the average of all three of your stats. That is both your attack and your defense. So if two people who don't have any attributes that mess with any of this just try to beat the crap out of each other, one of you would both roll your uh, 2d6 plus your combat value, and one of you is rolling to attack and one of them is rolling to defend. So you don't have to spend points in AC. Uh, but there is armor. Let me pull up armor real quick. Armor is important. Because armor absorbs or prevents damage. It feels like you have to max out your body, mind, and soul in order to have really high attack and defense then. Yeah, although you can also not max them out, but then spend by attributes that give it so yeah your general attack isn't that great but when i use my optic blast that particular attack is really good mm. so that doesn't use your attack combat value? it uses that plus a bonus oh. that's how you, you would buy a special weapon that had i think there's a weapon enhancer let's see here weapon enhancements let's take a look at this I mean, I'd like to throw a question in the queue when you yeah, have fire a away. chance. What do you got? Uh, you were you were saying something about like, let's say if we hyper focus on like one type of attribute, you were saying mm -hmm. that by being a certain level, we're going to have a lower threshold at like a bare minimum of like just kind of showing up to play in the other stats, right? 
Is that what you were saying? Yeah, I'll need to take a look at how that works because I'm pretty sure you can't cheat the system by like deliberately giving yourself less. I think it's more you're required to be this tall in order to go. That's on the what ride. I was wondering. So you have to put a certain amount in something. Okay. Let me let me take a look at that. And let me see if I can find the enhancer that would allow you to get a buff on that attack roll. Also, if you could confirm or deny, it looks like when making at the very least attack rolls, if not other rolls, it's boiled down into minor and major and obstacle and edge. Is that right? Yeah. I'm not so seeing uh, a minor like edge. It just looks like it's like inspiration. It's like inspiration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So if you roll, but you have a minor edge, you roll 3d6 and take the best two. If you have a yeah. major edge, you roll 4d6 and take the best two. 4d6. Okay. Obstacles work the opposite way. Yeah. Two and then one. Okay. I see. So just one, two, three, and four. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. And then uh, no modifier would just be whatever the roll is. Right. Okay. Ways to max. boost. Go ahead. Oh, what was the max stat of mind, body, and soul? Is that also 12? Do, do, do character benchmarks. Right now it is 10. No, it's 12. It's 12. It's 12. And each one of those points costs two. Correct. So if you want to be like absolutely best of the best, just in peak condition, that costs, <laughs> uh, you have to join the codex and that costs you 36 points. <laughs> Not a call. So if you want to drop just 100 to be at, uh, out of 36% of your points to just be absolutely like top tier honed in everything, you can do that. You won't have 12 many... points for mine, 12 points for soul, 12 points for body. Oh, it's two each. That'd be 72. So yeah, it's like 24 mm -hmm. per stat and 24 mm -hmm. times three is 72. 72. Okay. I keep oh, not doubling so things. Well, again, you're not, you're not meant, it's not automatic that you should have max stats and everything, right? That's not a given. I'm a little dirty min max here, okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the gamer. <laughs> I'm actually working on assisting with that min maxing here. There's something I'm looking for. Okay, so armor. You can buy armor as an ability. Two points per level. Every po rank of armor lets you absorb uh, five points of damage. Mm. So if you had armor rank six for 12 points, you would take 30 points off of every hit that hit you. You would just absolutely shrug things off left and right. What about health? Is that body? Health is your body and your soul. Let's see how that's derived. So if I put a bunch of points into body, I'm not going to be looking like the Hulk, like She-Hulk. I ain't you trying to be like built. You can built. manifest that. You get to describe what your character looks like. Okay. You could be like just a wafer thin, teeny tiny person who's ridiculously strong if that's your character concept. You might want to buy some... Uh, attributes or some limiters or something that like reinforces that idea if that's your concept but you could do that what was i looking at a moment ago oh how to calculate your health actually you know what let me not get distracted one thing at a time there is a special ability called attack mastery and attack mastery it costs one point per level and it just increases your attack combat value what would be the difference between that and massive damage? I think massive damage is a multiplier. Of it's when, the yeah, it's when you hit. It's when you successfully hit. So your your combat value takes all three of your stats into play, mind, body, and soul. So if you want a plus 10 in your combat value, you have to spend 72 points to max out all those stats. But if you don't want to do that, let's say you only spend half of that right so you have sixes across the board probably wouldn't want to do that probably would want some better stats somewhere you spend 36 points you have sixes across the board now your attack value is six instead of ten but then you take six ranks of attack mastery and for six points instead of 36 more points you get plus six to your attack value an attack value is to hit yes and damage multiplier is the damage. is when you hit after you've hit exactly So now here's here's the other thing. If you really want to get noodly, <laughs> uh, mm, let me see. 
never mind. That would, uh, I don't think that would work. I don't think that would work. I thought there was a way to cheat the system, but I don't think the augmented ability will let you do that. So what's the point of even putting, I mean, points into body, soul, and mind when you can just do attack mastery and... Because not everything is about attacking. You're heroes. It's it's yes, not it just about punching. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if your character win combat and win combat only. <laughs> if your character has a crisis of faith or needs to speak out on behalf of Earth in the tribunal of the cosmic realms in order to argue why you shouldn't be eliminated, there's a lot more to this world than just beating the crap out of people. That's why. I think combat, I think attacking people, I guess, it would get my way. <laughs> See, I don't know what I expected when I ran this. Yeah. Uh, one of the things, when I invited you, this always happens. One of the things about this world is that the previous edition of this game, Silver Age Sentinels, really bought into the whole idea that heroes don't kill people, right? Heroes are heroic. All heroes have this code of, you know, Batman and Superman. They don't kill. That's the line they don't cross. In absolute power... 20 years later, that has blurred a little bit, but there are still a lot of members of the superhero community who hold that important line to themselves. But not everyone. So one of the things you're going to need to decide as a group is, where do you fall? Are you willing to kill? What are you fighting for? What's your home city? I think you guys should pick what city you want to be based out of. I was going to say, that's kind of a good point. Maybe before we zero in on who exactly we are, maybe we should figure out what part of team we are. Because, like, that's going to influence how we want our care. I know that technically you're born, you grow up, you become a hero, you join a team. But, like, I feel like when, you know, when you build a superhero team, you don't really think about... When you're writing a comic book. Yeah. yeah, you kind of figure out where did we, how do we, where are we now and how did we get here comes later. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we're ready so, uh, to be the uh, illustrious heroes of Milton Keynes. <laughs> I don't know if it's just cringy to say we met at like a hero school, like My Hero Academia style. There is at least one the of those. Easiest. There is at least but one of those. I'm gonna look it I'm up. Sure it was something more creative, but that's always an easy uh, default one in worst case. Like Ioth Academy, but <laughs> for heroes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There is at least one. Let me find that school. I mean, we have a school in uh, in Coriander as well that we can do. use to like, do. apply towards Oh, this. really? Cool. Yeah, the Donahue Institute. It's totally not the X-Men Manor. <laughs> the funny thing about that is that Coriander Society, it, on that world, it's a 1930s-style pulp world, but John is from Earth, so he was like, let's start this school that's definitely not Professor Xavier's school of, for mutants, and, but nobody had any idea what he was saying. So canonically, in the story, he's ripping off Professor X. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What is a combat technique? Is that just if you're a melee fighter, you put points into, hey, oh, do I do karate? No, let's, let's look at combat techniques. Uh, thank you, it's the, it is the Harrison Academy. Uh, it's in Empire City, AKA New York. I'll pull that up in a moment, but first let's take a look at combat techniques. Oh, I found it. Okay, page 71 on the actual mm -hmm. book. Oh, yeah, Seawolf looks like a total D-bag, but a really hot D-bag. <laughs> Seawolf is a uh, morally enigmatic character, we'll say. Yeah. He's, uh -huh. he's, he's been on both sides of things, and he's had sort of a, a, a bad press that he doesn't necessarily deserve, but he's also made some rough choices. I feel like our actual, like, our players would be like, oh, yeah, we don't, like... Sea Wolf. I feel like our characters are going to end up loving Sea Wolf and be down for the idea of Hero Apocalypse. Oh my God, he's hot! <laughs> oh no, he's hot. <laughs> okay, the Harrison Academy for Metahuman Studies. So there is a academy in Japan that was teaching heroes. Uh, no relation to Quirks, and they realized after the Hod Crisis, which was the alien invasion. Uh, that created a, even more metahumans. They, a, a bunch of different organizations, the Ascension Institute, the Sanctuary Alliance, uh, Alliance and the Wardenclyffe Agency came together and they formed a academy in the Bronx. Let's take a look at what else. It opened in 2006. Can I just say, I love as I'm looking through the main book, how they have these cool little like 
like old Silver Age comics and Penny Dreadfuls of all these heroes being introduced and the trials and tribulations that they face throughout their career. It's really pretty inspiring. Dude, there's a lot of lore. There is a lot. Like this, we could use this system to run whatever. Like if we wanted to take this system and go play DC Heroes or or my, oh my hero gosh. if we were going to do my hero we'd use big eye small mouth but like we could play this with if any superhero setting that we wanted but for sentinel earth there's a ton of lore and a ton of cool heroes mate when you get a second can you go to page 57 ish of whatever thing you're using there is a really cool picture of a cat captain I, mm -hmm. and then a beetle and yeah exactly a beetle and bird alien people like, yeah. oh my gosh like that's, I mean, there's I all these stellar empires out there, magical worlds, you know, lost kingdoms. It's all out there. It's all out there. <laughs> this is so great. Part of me wants certain. to, like, take this group and be like, okay, we're going to have Lemon as the, the cat captain. We'll have Leg Day as the big old bug goggle thing. <laughs> I'll do the bird and then... We come to Earth. Pods is the influencer that's like, gets abducted us. and dragged away on your adventures, I, ga Guardian and then, style. And then <laughs> Levikiwi's like, "We are confused by your uh, by your interesting human ways of trying to talk with people. We just kill you and take your stuff. <laughs> Problem solved. Your ways Curious. are great to me, Earthling. Tell I don't me know if you guys have watched uh... this TikTok." You guys have watched the boys where like the one superhero chick is like on Instagram live while like shit is going or when stuff's going down. Mm -hmm. That's why I feel like what Pods would be doing. Like I'd be like Mer I'd be like the main guy like killing everyone and Pods is like, well, welcome back to my live. <laughs> As you can see. Doesn't Diva do that in Overwatch? Doesn't she like live stream her battles against the Omnix and stuff like that? I think so. Mm, probably. <laughs> Seems like oh, she'd I think be the streamer. I think this answered my earlier question. It says larger characters total plus 10 points. So you can just spend 10 points to become a larger character. Yeah, you just get all those abilities in that package. What page is that on? Uh, 49. Yeah, there you go. I saw a thing earlier that said, like, you can be, like, absolutely massive, which I don't. Here we go. Well, That's this says for every size rank greater, consider the following cumulative modifiers. So you just oh, keep buying it. Oh, you, okay, so it's it's 10 points per level, basically. Yeah, so if you want to be huge, you do it twice. Oh. But you just need to keep in mind that you're going to have, you're going to run into some uh, benchmark limiters on you at some point. Did somebody have a question? Yeah, just about my overall concept of I can stop scrolling through powers and try and nail something down, so I'm not sure, sure forever. Um, <laughs> what, on dynamic power shapeshifting, which is the basis for the shape changer, uh, example class mm -hmm. uh so my guy was that i want to like consume things mm -hmm. or um be able to replicate things that i've seen before would it be an acceptable limiter on the dynamic powers subtype to have things that i have in my pocket dimension or that i have physically touched before i'm inclined to say yes uh let me let me go to the shapeshifter and then we'll figure out the best way to implement that this is what I love about this system, by the way, is you can just say, yeah, probably, let's let's make that work. Let's make it happen. Okay, so dynamic powers, major shape changing. And yep. let's look at the limiters that we have available. Uh, it was page 142 had which limiters could be used, no, which enhancers could be used. So we should be able to use whatever limiters we need to. Yeah, we should be able to do that. Let's look at what limiters we could use. Okay, activation, assisted, Backlash charges, concentration, consumable. Do you do, does it run me through without the rules your concept of how this works? Uh, so I'm thinking that my guy has like a pocket dimension kind of inside himself, or mm -hmm. at least a, a pocket dimension of his own, which is not visible, in which he could essentially consume objects like mm -hmm. guns or maybe vehicles, depending on how many points I put into pocket dimension, and mm -hmm. then be able to generate those from himself afterwards. Indefinitely or one for one? Uh, I guess one for one in terms of uh, inorganic things, mm -hmm. and then when it comes to organic shape changing, things that he's touched before. Mm, like animals. People. Yeah, people or animals. But I don't know how much that 
uh, mm -hmm. crosses over with like alternate form. Hmm. So I'm thinking that I could probably get uh, the shape changer dynamic power mm. with the major category, which is minus one, then get plus one from like the limiters of not being able to just uh, shape shift into anything. Okay, so in my thought, <laughs> we could treat this as oh. a un unique limiter. Me. Um, yeah, no, we've got we've got assistance there in the chat. Uh, do do do. Environmental only functions. What was this? Environmental one assignment only objects or creatures previously touched. Okay, so I might not even need a pocket dimension then. Yeah, you wouldn't. You could have a pocket dimension if you wanted that, but otherwise, it's just items that you've touched. You can transform into. Let's take a look at the dynamic powers, which is one of the most like complicated abilities. Yeah, it's the most fucky. <laughs> oh, pardon me. Yep. Yep. We already used the one! We used the <laughs> one. Damn. Everybody Damn. gets one. Ooh, everyone gets one. Oh, okay. No, no. When are we <laughs> logging off? No, no. no. <laughs> uh. But what if I was with a outside of... <laughs> Would that be okay? And then the pigeon... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dynamic powers. I want to see what the overall, like, all right, 10 points per level, super, super yeah, expensive. It's a very expensive thing. But I'm thinking of it, it could be like, uh, in this case, like, <clears throat> almost infinite guns, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, dynamic powers, major category. Um, so it can be organic or it can be inorganic. And so let's, let's say you have eaten an ob, you've absorbed an object. Yeah. You can reproduce that object once. Mm -hmm. You have touched a person. You can replicate that person indefinitely. That's where we're going with that. Yeah. Wait, okay. what? Excuse me? <laughs> like Kirby? But like, they're dead, right? Like, you've eaten them. <laughs> well, no, 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 you don't eat the person. Like, he's saying it's two different things. One of them is animal oh. style. You touch somebody, now you've acquired them, now you can morph oh, into them. Okay, okay. The other one is objects, you can absorb them and then reproduce them. I mean, just to clarify, I'm fine with it either way. I was just, you know, really confused about what I was happening. I almost feel like these are two separate powers. I feel like you'd purchase the pocket dimension with some stuff on it so you can store yeah. things and then pull them out. And then the dynamic power is shape-shifting with, uh, with the limiter and the enhancement that we talked about. I feel okay, like those so are two different things. Yeah, okay. I really hope that Raven's familiar is actually a crow and not a raven. And it's like a big point of contention whenever anyone brings it up. We're not going to keep having this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> so I might not even need the uh, the overall shape shifting power. I'm not I sure. mean, if you want to turn into people, then it would either be dynamic yeah. powers or a different attribute. Yeah, or like alternate form. Mm -hmm. so, Lemon, that's who we were talking about. We were talking about Cammy when we were trying to figure yeah, out who Cammy. that was. So I'm looking at the templates and it's like... They only spend like sometimes points on one stat, like body. Like if you're a speedster, you have 40 points, you spend it on body. I thought you'd mm -hmm. want to distribute that a little. Well, you still have everywhere. 60 points. That's the thing. This just says in order to get the most out of it, you should do at least this. Here's your 40 points. You have 60 points to spend on other crap. Oh. That's the thing about the template. It's not like taking over all the decision making for you. It's more just saying, hey, let's give you a quick suite of powers. And then you have the room, so you don't have to start from scratch. And now you can spend your points to enhance these things or to say, not only am I an influencer, I'm also an alien. So I'm going to buy that package, the alien package over here. That's 30 <laughs> points. This is 30 points. That's 60 points. I have 40 points left to spend on whatever I want. Huh. How many points should I put in body, mind, and soul? Just as like a starter. 
So I don't have that many points if I want to have a lot of bells and whistles. So <laughs> I should probably figure out mind, body, and soul first. Probably, probably. But so I don't see a template that a, kind of gives me a. Well, let, let me first off. If you do stat values, uh, it's in the journal. It's four one, and I can force it to the front here real quick. There's two things that are going to be helpful here. First off, stat values. Bam. Ah, can you do it again? I X'd out. <laughs> bam. I, I have, I have re banned it. The banning will continue until morale improves. <laughs> oh, oh man, there's a, there's a lot of these. I need you. So generally Thank speaking, you. this just sort of tells you if you want to create your character to be like, yeah, I'm, I'm decent at everything, you would want to be uh, a four in everything. Gotcha. At least no lower than a four, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I want to be amazing. Yeah, I'm gonna say no. We're well, we're not we're not doing that. We're gonna have one of us is each gonna be power, soul, and whatever the bad one <laughs> is, the and then one of us will be all three. Yeah, Mind, exactly. body, and soul, <laughs> and yeah. heart. Exactly. But here's another thing that's gonna be helpful, right? Because how does this actually apply? How this actually applies is with target numbers. This is going to, think, I think, give you a better idea of how this will work. This is 8-1. Boop, there you go. So let's say I tell you that in order to push the car off of the baby carriage, it is a challenging task. I tell you it's a difficulty of 18. Okay. That means you'd need to roll 2d6, add your body and get at least an 18. You couldn't now, if I have ahead. a 12 body, does that mean that it's 2d6 plus 12? Yes. Oh, interesting. Yes, okay. exactly. Are you rounding up or down for decimals? Um, oh, for ten, decimals? Ten is, well, like, no, it makes sense because the some average, of these derive values, yeah. If I have a 10, 10, mm -hmm. 9, I'm guessing it's like 9 point. Well, let me take a look, five. it's in the book, A Reading oh. Rainbow. Ooh. Now, wait a minute, did you say that lifting a car was exceptional? I made that up. I just pulled that out of my head. <laughs> I, oh, I just want to make I want to make sure I know what I'm trying to shoot for here because you know. This comic says always round down. Mm -hmm. There you go. Always round down. Thank you. What if I have a power that says I always round up? Is that a thing I can do? <laughs> I, I don't so think we can so. we can make up power. We can make up powers. Maybe my power I make up is my I power, always round up. My power is that I have lots and lots of powers. Exactly. <laughs> But I think that there are, there might be a, like a super strength attribute. Yeah. This flight, is. by the way, if you want flight. Yeah. That's talking to Kyle. It. <laughs> by the way, mate, you've given me an idea about how I'm going to just further break the system because I was deciding if I wanted to be that guy or not, and I decided I will. Um, <laughs> Always be. <laughs> so, I uh, I'm going to get a little complicated with it, but it's going to be it's going to be good. When I expected nothing less, Necra's character in in Yokai Blossom had a portal ability where she could send people to the Shadow Realm, which is again, it's also derived from the same source, so people can open portals in this as well. All right, let's see power variation. You know that Pokemon that I made for Yokai Blossom? I didn't even use half of its powers that I. Oh, you made that thing so annoying, dude. Dude, it was amazing. And I only ended up using the power that said everyone gets plus five to everything all the time. Because why would I do anything else? That was fantastic. That was an amazing power. Can I take that power again? Is that hair? We do that power again. What was the power? Where you give everyone like, it was like you you give everyone plus five oh, to everything. I mean, it, there's, it, it, there's it a limiter up. called imbue where it's like, I don't get this power myself. I give it to other people. Okay. All right, resilient, size change, skill group, space flight. Oh, here's extra actions. Oh, hello. Enhance, uh, summon creatures, super sense, super speed. Ooh, expertise. Oh my gosh, I love the ease in this game. That's great. What's so good, you can spend three points and you actually, you spend nine points and you can move at a thousand kilometers an hour. Holy jeez. With super speed. Yeah. Okay, super, super cool strength. Eight points per level. You can lift 20 to 30 kilograms times your body stat is normal. So normal folk, if you, let's say your body stat is, let's do some quick maths. 
uh, let's say you're incredibly strong. You've got a body stat of 12, right? So you can lift 360 kilograms. How many kilograms does a car weigh? Okay, so with a strength of 12, you cannot lift a car. With a body of 12, you are not strong enough to lift a car. You might be able to like, you know, just sort of kind of lift it um, up so other people can grab underneath it or like shove it around, but you can't pick it up. Super strength lets you... Every rank of super strength adds plus 10 to your unarmed attacks. Mm -hmm. a plus two damage to... Your, plus two to your damage multiplier when using melee weapons. Okay. So you deal a ton of damage with super strength. If you wanted to lift a truck, you would need two ranks of super strength. So for 16 points, you can lift a truck. Gotcha. For 80 points, you can lift the Empire State Building. All right. Immunity? What is immunity? Hello. Diplomatic <laughs> immunity. You probably could yeah. build a character who had diplomatic immunity. I was going to say, I, I kind of like that idea. <laughs> uh, the connected attribute means that you know people who know people. You're a member of an organization. You have access to resources, etc. Immunity. So rank one immunity, you're immune to on Christmas. On Christmas and Easter, nobody can hurt you. <laughs> rank two immunity uh it's the way that it works is it's, it's about specificity so for one rank you're immune to something incredibly specific uh seed arrows made from cedar can't hurt you yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> rank two is like uh gold and silver can't hurt you one small group of opponents like squirrels can't hurt you uh whenever you're in the water you people can't hurt you oh interesting People Level can't hurt me as long as I'm playing the trombone. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be an item dependency, actually. Oh, the trombone of invincibility. <laughs> the trombone of invincibility. Aww. Actually, it depends. Either you create an item that has the, in, the uh, invincibility, invulnerability attribute, or you just have the ability of invincibility, but with a limiter that it requires you to have a trombone. And at that point, it's not a specific trombone. It's any trombone. Oh, or a can opener. Or a can opener. <laughs> with, the, with the correct build, any trombone can be the trombone of invincibility. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Rank three is like any iron weapon can't hurt you. None of your blood relatives can hurt you, or no animals can hurt you, or at night nobody can hurt you. Rank four is where you finally get up to uh, elemental attacks like electricity, cold, etc. How is everybody doing? And does anybody need guidance or clarification or help with your concept? What is uh, inspired? Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, it's okay. I'm reading something Discami recommended. Discami. Where are you seeing? I'm just not sure where we're at. Like, what are we're, we all supposed to be working on right now? Picking out all your attributes and building out your character and spending them points. Okay. Uh, on page number 92, there is a mm -hmm. character attribute called inspire. And it says that if you're successful, they are inspired. And then it's kind of like listing what that does, but I'm trying to figure out like what that exactly means. Like, is it minor or major improvements? Is it like, let's see. It says that they can make a skill roll instead of a stat roll, but I don't really know what a skill versus stat roll is. It says it's easier. Uh, it only works in certain situations. Inspired, inspired characters. characters. Yeah. This is where you're looking for. Uh, receive a bonus equal to their inspire level to any appropriate stat or skill group. So if you max this out, you'd have inspire level six, right? And then you'd want uh -huh. to, yeah. So inspire level six, if you successfully inspired them, they get plus six to relevant roles. Now, what does that mean relevant? Like based off what I'm trying to inspire? Well, if you go down to the enhancements, you can see that galvanize allows them to get, uh, let's see attack and defense rolls. So by default, uh -huh. Inspire doesn't let you boost attack and defense rolls. Okay. But if you can say, come on team, we can do it. Just, you know, don't give up. 
climbing this mountain or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> hike, damn you, hike! Exactly. The team coach would have tons of ranks of Inspire. So from what I'm kind of grasping, and I want to make sure that I'm not like, you know, mm -hmm. I'm misunderstanding or pigeonholing anybody, but it sounds like Lemon Kiwi wants to kill people. They're going to be a really cool, like, ranged, like, uh, force powerhouse, like magic, like, or, or, mm -hmm. or energy, like, super, super blast. Like, are you going to the psychic? Nothing. Are you are you still looking at being psychic? I, I'm doing the math on how to get good core stats and my my one but my one attack. But You're I'm gonna have one big points. attack. Yeah. Okay. So I'm you just want to be like points. overall good at every kind of good at everything, and then make people's heads explode. Is that like yeah. your whole build right now? Blast. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Good at everything, and then optic blast. Okay. Cool. Uh, not literally an optic blast, but like you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get just my my big wob, boom. Wob, 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 wob. And then with with leg day, it sounds like you're you're kind of going to be our our support or utility person, or but you're also going to be terrifying in regards to where you can like change into people and like take over like what they look like, and then you can also replicate any item that you've ever eaten. Uh, so, <laughs> how how big? I guess what I'm wondering is how big is your mouth? Like, are you going to be pulling out just can openers uh, or, well, that, or that, buildings? That's, that's, why, that's why I moved over to like saying consume instead, so we could like just open up a pocket. Of okay. Yep. Gotcha. Okay. You don't like unhinge your like, jaw like a snake to swallow a, t a, a Tacoma, <laughs> you know? I, I'm, I'm sure you'll make a show of eating some things, though. I had a question uh, about weapon. Um, yeah. In that same list, there's also something called ranged attack slash defense. On the primer, page seven, mm -hmm. could I just not level that up instead of weapon plus a ranged enhancement? No, because if the weapon doesn't have the ranged enhancement, then it can't be used at range. You might be really good at ranged attacks, but that doesn't do you any good if you're holding an axe. Okay, right? so or I figured I could people. just use my hands to, like, blast. I wasn't planning on having, like, a object holding, but if I need to, that's fine. No, if you take the weapon attribute, it doesn't actually create a physical weapon. It just gives you an attack of some kind. Yeah. So yeah, if you if you just take the weapon attribute with range and everything, you can say that you shoot lasers out of your eyes or that you hold up your hands, but it's you shooting the attack. You don't need an external item. Okay, because there's something called ranged attack that's like a separate attribute. And mm -hmm. I was just wondering if that's, what's the difference between ranged attack attribute and weapon attribute? The, okay, so the weapon, uh, do, 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 do. let's take a look. I'm just looking at page seven of the primer. Mm -hmm. Cause it says plus two to attack defense combat value using specific ranged weapon or technique. So okay. Sounds like it. So there is, yeah, that. there's a ranged attack attribute, which means that let's say you have a, you want to be really good with guns. You want to be bullseye. You would take six ranks of ranged attack, which would mean that you would have like plus 12 to attack with pistols. So what you could do is you could spend points on your psychic blast, right? And then you could which spend points, weapon. which is weapon. And then you could spend points on ranged attack and the ranged attack is your psychic blast to make your psychic blast more likely to hit. So you could stack those two together, I believe. Okay. Oh, no, it says distance weapons. It says distance weapons. So this is... Uh, no, weapon attribute is included in here. Yes. So you could say, I'm taking the ranged weapon, the ranged attack attribute, and it applies to my powers. That'd be a cost-effective okay. way to get more bang for your buck. And as Daiskami says in chat, the more points you put into the weapon attribute, the harder it hits. The more points you put into ranged attack, the more likely you are to hit. Ah, oh, I don't know what to put points in. Is it ranged or weapon? I would say start assigning some things and then uh, just move stuff around. But if you folks want, what we can do is we can take a short break. Mm -hmm. We can come back 
And then we can talk more about who you're going to be in the world because you have yes. access to all these tools. You have access to this entire book. You've got time. Yes. We have a week before we go on our first adventure. So let's plant mm -hmm. all these seeds. Come back in a few minutes and we'll talk more about who your characters are going to be, where you're going to fit into the world and what adventures you're going to go on. That way Great. you can take your homework home instead. All right. I love it. I'm here for it. All right. Yeah. Folks, we will be back in six minutes with more absolute power.